yesterday and the day before we started learning about the midot of the day. And Bezal Hashem, what we'll do, and that will be the, the idea here, is that every day that we learn, not only just to say Hayom, Echad Ba'omer, one day to the Omer, and throw a, a nice term, Chesed Shebagvura, whatever, that nobody knows even what, what it means. Including me. Not that, don't, don't think that I'm not making fun of anybody. People get offended with how I talk. I also don't know what it means. Netzach Shebagvura. But I can at least, we can analyze it in a more uh, basic way. How is it affecting me? So yesterday we went through Chesed Sheba Chesed and Gvura Sheba Chesed. Now in the week of Chesed, I explained uh, yesterday that this year it felt so comfortable because uh, we started the Sfirah of Chesed on a Sunday. And then Gvura is on a Monday, so it works very well with the days. And when Hashem created the world, the, on Sunday he used Midat HaChesed. On Monday he used Midat HaGvura and so forth. So now it's falling literally on the right days. So not only that it will make it easier for us to remember, it's also literally aligned very well with the energy of the day. So the entire week, is the week of Chesed. Uh, yesterday I said already that Chesed is equal love, Ahava. We went through Chesed Sheba Chesed, the love of love, that I have to love loving. That I can't be cheap with my love. Hashem gave me a lot of love and a lot of what to give others, and I can't be cheap with that. I talked about it yesterday, if, you, if some of you are not here, or may, you might not remember, but I mentioned that everybody has a talent. Everybody has some good qualities. Everybody. There's no such a thing that a person in this world doesn't have any type of talent or something that they're really, really good at or something that they love doing. The reason why you have that is for you to take it and give it to other people. And if you're not doing it, then you are really mistreating the fortune that Hashem gave you. And if you're not doing that, I highly suggest that you kind of figure out what is that talent that Hashem gave you even though it doesn't seem that you're like the greatest pianist in the world, and I'm not talking about this type of talents. If you are, great, then take this talent and use it. But even if you're an amazing cook, even if you're an amazing storyteller, whatever it is, you are a gardener, it doesn't matter. You have some type of a talent that most people don't have, it's for you to come and give it to the world. This is chesed sheba chesed, to love, to take all this love and to give this love to somebody else, and usually somebody that you don't even know. Then we went through Gvura Sheba Chesed, when I, we spoke that it's easy to love the people that are nice and kind to me, but it's very hard for me to love people who are not nice and kind to me, or they don't have the same opinions of me, or they don't hold by the same halakha that I go by, or whatever it is, they have a difference of political opinion, or whatever it is. Or chas v'shalom, they did something bad to me. How do you want me to love somebody now that is going against me and doing bad things to me? So Gvura Sheba Chesed, that's when I have to come and take a lot of effort to make sure that I love another person that it's, I don't want to love that person, or it's hard for me to love. But today, we have the middle, the Tiferet Sheba Chesed. Tiferet Sheba Chesed is the beauty in love. And we spoke about it yesterday, that the nicest or the most beautiful thing in the world is real love. Everybody wants to be loved, everybody wants to have love, fall in love. We spoke about it yesterday, that when a person is in love, oh, the, the world can, it can collide, they don't even care. There's nothing more pretty and beautiful in this world than love. If you're sitting and looking at a couple that are in love, or you see a child and a, and a parent, or there's nothing more beautiful in this world than love. Now, where do you see the most love? Usually you see it in a covenant of marriage. Usually the case. I'm not talking about the love that I love ice cream. That's not what I'm talking about. But where do you see love in its uh, finest? When you see a young couple, when they look at each other and they're so in love and they don't even know what's going on around them. I told you yesterday and many other times that many years ago I was a wedding photographer, which was a very uh, special special uh, job and uh, one of them because I was constantly in weddings it's a simcha you're constantly in a simcha it's a very uh, very special energy I mean weddings are hectic but if you know how to kind of ride along it's a lot of happiness 
needless to say, what a great mitzvah, lesameh chatan vekala. There's a lot of great things there. Forget about the money; it was great money. But uh, <laughs> and like I told you, it, it allowed me seven years. I learned in yeshiva because I used to do one, two, three weddings, and then the whole day, all the whole month, just sit and learn in, in yeshiva. But nevertheless, one thing that I, I le- try to learn as much as I can. And one thing that I saw and noticed and observed is that you see the love between the couple. Sometimes you see the wedding, you, I would look at the couple and say, okay, they're getting divorced in half a year. This is, the, this is the, I don't know what, to, what they're doing here together. Waste of $100,000. But sometimes you see the ones that are in love, they're like in some completely different place. They don't even care what's going on. So where do you see the most, most, most love is when two people are coming in a covenant of marriage, what's called Brit Nisuim. Now, what is a Brit Nisuim, a covenant of marriage? It's called, uh, in Hebrew, it's called Mechuryavut Hadadit. In English, I think the closest you can get is mutual commitment. That we, together we commit to each other. There's a commitment between me and you. And this is not an easy thing to do because Taking two opposites together and putting them together, that's almost an impossible thing. Now, if we're going back to the, to the name of the Sfira, it's called Tiferet. There are eight words in Hebrew that will define the, the word beauty, or what's called Yofi. So one of them is Tiferet. In English, you have to forgive me, my English is not grammatically so great. It might sound good, but... I'm sure there's many words that for the word beauty, but in Hebrew, specifically, there are eight words, and one of them is called uh, uh, tiferet. Now, what is really tiferet? It's expressing the, the beauty that you can see in things that are in harmony. Sometimes you see things that are beautiful, but they're not in harmony. Sometimes you see something that is working out so nice in such a... Har- a harmony way. I don't, I don't know if you can say the word harmonical way. That's what you say? Yeah. Yeah. Harmonious. Well, harmonious. Harmonica is like the... Right? Okay. So... So... so yeah, yeah, yeah. The mapuchit. So, but in a very... Har- how do you say? Harmonious way? So, the, the, when you see something that is, is working so perfectly in harmony, that's the ferret. It's the beauty, but in something that is, is perfectly aligned. And, you know, the right word to it, in, at least in Hebrew, it's called the izun. Izun is balance. Uh, not to chas v'shalom hurt anybody's feelings, but most people in this world are not balanced. They're, they're totally leaning to one direction. I'm not saying it chas v'shalom to hurt anybody. I'm just making an observation, because if you are not balanced, then you need to find how to balance yourself. And... If you want to, I know many people are very interested in learning the teachings of Kabbalah. If you want to summarize the entire topic into a few words, what is the teachings of Kabbalah? Is to teach you how to bring yourself to a state of balance. That you are completely bematzav me'uzan. I'm, I'm not here, I'm not here, and I'm definitely not swinging. Most people, oh, the, the storm, the emotional storm that is going on in their mind and, and their feelings. And again, it's not about hurting anybody. It's about bringing a person to understand, I need to be meuzan, balanced. Not too much to this direction, not too much to this direction, and perfectly balanced. This is this beauty of harmony. This is tiferet. Now, I want to get to a, perf- a place of perfect balance. First of all, with myself, but more than that, with my surroundings. How do you get to a perfect balance between two things that are completely different? Me and my wife are completely two different people. Completely different. But, nevertheless, the idea is how do we get to a perfect balance between the two of us? Most people, when they're looking to get married, they're looking for some, something that doesn't exist. I told you that not too long ago, uh, uh, a certain individual he approached me and he told me, uh, maybe you can help me find my other half. Gladly, I will do my best. And I told him, what are you uh, looking for? I thought he'll just tell me a good-hearted girl or something. 
came out a paper, and she has to be at least five six. If she's five five, you don't want her? No. And then he gave me a whole list of description, and at the end of the list, I told him, "I'm very sorry to tell you, I don't think I can help you." Why? That's not nice. It's not nice that you don't want to help me. I, said, I, didn't want to, I didn't say I don't want to help you. I just said, I, said, I don't think I can help you. <laughs> He's like, why? I said, because what you're looking for, this creature doesn't exist. It, it doesn't exist what you want. You want to approach to find your other half. The best way is, Hashem, just give me what's good for me. That's it. When I went out on dates, I didn't have criteria there. What, what am I looking for? I was like, Hashem is going to find me the one that is the most suitable for me. Whether I'm happy with the external parts, who's asking me? Hashem is asking me if she's going to be tall or short, or if she's going to be like this or like that. And I think it's the most, uh, I mean, of course, has to be the minimum of, of okay, so it has to be attraction, has to be some uh, connection. But the ones who are coming with the list of demand, it will never work, because the Kadosh Baruch Hu says, your other half is uh, uh, other half. It's not connected. It's not, it's, now Hashem says, here, take some, take an opposite, now make it work. Now let's see you making work. Now people, most people don't have the tools, not the ability, definitely not the patience, and not the right guidance, so it ends up with a divorce. I can only say, I don't know, in the secular world, it's a whole different thing, but even in the religious world, go now to yeshivot and midrashot, they don't teach the teenagers what does it mean marriage? It's not sanua, it's not uh, modest, but you're making a mistake. You're not teaching the, the teenagers what, what they need to do. They don't know what to expect. There's zero guidance because it has to be like a very modest here. Uh, it's a very wrong approach. You have to explain to the young people what, what, what's going to happen here. What, are you, uh, what is your part here? But nevertheless, the Kadosh Baruch says, I want you to take two complete opposites and put them together. And really, this is the perfect balance, is that you take two things. If you want to try to balance, try to take a ball now and put a, like a board on the ball and now try to balance on the, on the ball. How do you make it balance when the two ends are in the same level? And this is exactly the idea. It can be, I'm giving now an example with marriage. It can be with any type of relationship. And in any type of relationship has to be a balance. This is the tiferet shebechesed. Now, this comes to teach me something very, very basic, that the beauty in love, because we were talking about uh, love of love, the severity, the gvura of love, the effort, but now we're talking about the beauty in love. What's the beauty in love? Is that I'm able to take two things that are completely not the same and connect them. If I can connect two things that are the same, what's the big deal? Now take two things that are completely the opposite and connect them. That's Tiferet Shebechesed, the beauty that you can bring out from love. Now, if you're looking for example, we're going to go again, example to the, to, to, again to the example of a man and a woman. If you're looking at the material part of it, or the Chomriyut, the materialism, or the Gashmiyut, the physicality, that's two different things. Two different things. A man is a male, a female, the woman is a female, but you know what they do? They actually complete each other. Physically, I'm talking about right now, only physically. They will complete each other. If you're looking at the souls of these two individuals, the husband and the wife, they have two souls. It's two separate souls with two separate purposes in the world, but they somehow still can assist each other. So there's a little bit of a difference between the physical part of the connection and the spiritual part of the connection. When I see two opposites that are able to connect, that's the beauty of the connection. This is the beauty that comes out of the ability of connecting these two opposites. And that's where you see perfection. This is the idea behind the creation of the world. Kadosh Baruch wanted to create a spiritual world, that will coexist with the physical world, and that they will together merge. This we can't see yet now. We're in exile, but very soon when Mashiach is going to come, we're going to be able to see how the physical and the spiritual coexist together 
what is called a neshama beguf, taking a goof, a body, and a soul, a spirit, and a soul, and putting them together. When Mashiach is going to come, we're going to be able to see with our own eyes, we're going to be able to see how the spiritual and the physical are uh, together. Now we can't see it. But this is the perfection when I'm able to see two opposites and put them together. This is the idea of Tiferet She Bechesed. Now, we like seeing things that are a little bit more practical. Now we talked a little bit uh, on a higher floor. Practically saying, I have to meditate or to really observe a relationship that I have that there's disagreements. And everybody has type of relationships. Can be your wife, can be your husband, can be your neighbor, can be your business partner, can be a, a neighbor, whatever it is. Everybody has at least one person in their life that there's a difference of opinions. And they have to be, and they're stuck with that relationship, by the way. It's not some uh, random guy on the train. I'm not talking about somebody annoyed you on the car and you, and that's not a disagreement. I'm talking about, can be your parents, that you're stuck. I, I know it sounds not nice, but you say, I'm saying stuck, but, but you're stuck in that relationship. Baruch Hashem. So take a relationship in your life that there's a disagreement here. And not necessarily disagreement, could be also the difference of opinions. And could very much be that the difference of opinion could be between two good friends. And can be between a husband and wife, can be between a father and a child and so forth. But practically saying, you take a relationship, there's a, a disagreement or a difference of opinion, and you have to, first of all, understand that the separation or the difference is the key to the perfect love. If you understand that the opposition, so to say, is actually the bridge to connect you, that's how you're able to build the relationship. If you see, oh, I can never get along with this person, and you're already turning around, this relationship will never work, but you didn't fulfill what you're supposed to. If you think it's by chance that you were born to your parents, most people, if they're lucky, they have a good relationship with their parents. But many, many people don't have a good relationship with their parents. Maybe we have a good relationship with one parent, but the other one can drive them nuts. But it's still, it's your parent, it's your father, it's your mother. And most people say, okay, this will never work. No, there's a reason why you got that parent. Or you as a parent got that child. We get so upset when our child goes somewhere that is not on my path. I'm already preparing myself that one day my kids are not going to go in sync with me. It's already hard for me. But I'm already preparing myself for the, for the blow. Because it will happen that my kids are not going to go 100% behind me. Maybe one, maybe two, I don't know. I, I, my, my job here is to give them tools to be good people in this world. Doesn't mean they're gonna follow exactly where I go. You know, I, I pray for Mashiach to come all day long. Everybody has a reason why they want Mashiach to come. I pray for Mashiach to come just so I don't have to deal with teenagers, <laughs> with my kids. Now the oldest one is already starting to scrape the teenage age. So I'm like, Hashem said, Mashiach, I don't need to deal now with teenagers. This is the last thing that I need to do. So, because you know what? I was a, a star for my parents. I can't even imagine what Hashem is cooking for me with my kids. Midah ke neged midah. So measure for measure. So, but the, the point is that as parents even, we're looking at our kids, we get upset when they don't do what I want or they don't follow my path or... I, should, I have to just, as a parent, be happy that they're healthy, that they're good, and they're, they're fulfilling their purpose. It's not going to be my purpose. So I'll, again, I have to understand that the relationships that I'm, I will say a, a not nice word, stuck in, they are for me to find the differences and to understand that the differences is the key to the success of this relationship. And if I'm able to take these differences and connect them, then I'm able to perform what is called Tiferet Shebechesed, to bring the beauty that's in the love. The love is not when you have it easy, it's when it comes not easy. Most people, like I told you, when it comes to marriages, in the engagement time or the dating time, everything is good, you are in love, you can't even be reached on the phone. Three days after the wedding, I'm getting divorced, I don't like her. Well, you're only married for three days. I can't stand her. 
But it's only three days. What's going to happen in three months? Oh, you are boy. So, but the, the, the reality is that the difference is, is, this is the key to the true beauty that you can find in love, is to take two opposites, and I keep giving examples with marriage. Take it to any relationship you want. Take it with a person that you're in the same congregation, same community, it doesn't matter. But a person that is in your life, it's not by chance. If that person is in your life, doesn't matter where, then the, that person is here for you to be able to build some relationship. That's why I told you in the beginning that when I need to work on my midot, then the Kadosh Buhu is going to plant, so to say, in my life, all the right people to reflect the midah on me. And I said that so many times, I will repeat myself, that if I need to work on my anger, if I have the midah of ka'as, and I need to work on anger, Hashem is going to give me a wife that's going to get me angry all day long. And there's nothing wrong with my wife. I have to work on myself. If I have to work on patience, then Hashem will give me kids that are going to drive me out of my mind. And if I have to work on jealousy, Hashem is going to put me in a neighborhood that everybody's driving BMWs and Mercedeses and I only have a Toyota or whatever it is. Hashem is always going to put in front of me the right mirror that, I, that will annoy me. If it's annoying me, ah, that's the midah I need to fine tune. Like you to fine tune a guitar or a piano, ding, 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 ding. You tune it, ding, 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 same thing. So all the people in your life that are their opposites, so to say, it's not for you to get frustrated or upset. It's to take a moment. This is what we want to meditate on today. You have 24 hours to find that relationship. It can be 10, but find one and say, okay, this person, the, the disagreement right now or the argument, or the difference of opinions are the key to get us together. And if I'm able to make it work, that's it. I was able to touch, so to say, the midah of tiferet shebechesed in my life. And I will constantly, this is not something to focus on today. This is something to focus on the rest of your life. That the, now it's just the titles that we are uh, learning every day in small increments. But you have to make yourself some type of a chart and constantly remind yourself that you have to, on a regular basis, apply that and find these specific relationship. And if it doesn't work out so well with your wife, it doesn't always mean that right away you have to run to the Rabbanut to get a divorce. And you know what? I, a lot of people, I tell them, listen, you might be that your tikkun in this world is to live in a not good marriage. And it doesn't mean that it's going to change. and doesn't mean that if you're going to get divorced, it's going to help. So Hashem will give you another wife twice worse because you didn't do it with the first one. So sometimes you need to deal with the situation and understand this is what I'm stuck with. This is, again, the me humbling myself. It's crushing myself that I'm a nothing, that I have to deal with situations. It doesn't mean that I'm bad. It just means that this is where Hashem wants to, you to put the effort. What is required for me is to understand that any person in my life does the potential of bringing the love out to the surface. Specifically, the tiferet shebechesed is to find where can I bring harmony and bring some type of love in a relationship in my life that most likely will never be perfect. But nevertheless, try to bring it to be me'uzan, to be, how did we say, not harmonica, harmonious. harmonious. Oh, Hashem. <laughs>